right, on to another issue that is often uh, controversial, and that is the issue of climate change. And whilst many in our mainstream media and others say there is no debate, the science is settled, much of that science is based on modelling, modelling of what might happen or is happening to our environment. And it would seem there is no such thing as a perfect model. Indeed, on October the 26th, I think it was, a little over a month ago, the United Nations itself revised its estimates of global warming by the end of the century. Those estimates, in the most catastrophic way, had suggested eight degrees global warming or more planet fries. They are now down to two and a half degrees Celsius of global warming by the end of the century in the next 80 years or so. Um, At which stage the UN says you're not dealing with a crisis with the end of life as we know it, but you do have some serious climate change to ameliorate and to adapt to. So I saw that change in prediction and modelling from the United Nations in many ways, is an admission that the crisis, the emergency of climate change, appears to be waning, may indeed be over. Is that the case? And what is happening here? Well, I do believe in experts to a certain extent, and I think one of our leading experts in the country is Professor uh, Jim Rennick, who is a climate scientist. Uh, He's at Victoria University, does work for NIWA, and indeed he consults and contributes to the IPCC, the kind of gold standard on climate change. And I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Jim uh, on the platform, I think, for the first time. Uh, Jim, good morning to you. Thank you for for joining us. Oh, good morning, Sean. Thanks for the introduction. All right. Um, Was it accurate? I didn't get anything wrong? Uh, I think the way you you described it was, was a bit off, eight degrees was the upper end of the range that had been predicted and the two and a half is the average of the range. Okay, well, where are we at now, James? What's the the prediction? It's the two and a half, isn't it? These numbers are the, yeah, the the sensitivity of the climate. How much warming do you get if you double the amount of carbon dioxide in the year, which will be at well before the end of the century? No, no, hang on, James. we We better get the basis of the discussion right. A UN report came out on, I think, the 26th of October that says the projection, the modelling is now for two and a half degrees, around two and a half degrees of warming by the end of the century. Is that right? Like I said, that's the average. There's a range of... Okay, that's the average, but that's the the new prediction from the United Nations, right? Um, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's it the, is. Yeah, like yes. I said, that's the average of the... Uh, okay, it's yeah. the average, but that's a prediction. Is that catastrophic climate warm, uh, climate change? And it is just a prediction. Were it to occur by the end of the century, is that catastrophic? Yeah, it is in a lot of ways. All the co- Why did the UN report say clear? it's not then? Did it say it's not? Well, it said that now the strategy must be to ameliorate or adapt to that level of climate change, right? Well, we're going to have to adapt to whatever level of climate change we get. That's absolutely right. And, you know, it's very hard to say. What's catastrophic for some people is not catastrophic for others. Um, The more warming we get, the more damage and the harder it is to deal with, basically. Yeah. So I think for a lot of... So it's good news that we've gone from an upper prediction of 8 to a likely prediction now of 2.5. Well, you put that way, absolutely. Yeah, the average can come down a little bit, but, you know, we still need to stop as soon as we can. And stopping at one and a half, not two and a half degrees would be okay. a lot better. Okay. Has, can the abandonment of the upper catastrophic prediction and this new more moderate prediction, is that because mankind's done anything to stop the warming or is it just that the model was wrong? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, some of the some of the most recent models have been a bit too sensitive in the way they've handled clouds. So they've had very large warmings, and that's understood now. But where we end up is much more about what humanity does with emissions. You know, these different numbers really depend on different amounts of carbon dioxide in the air. So how quickly we get away from fossil fuels. 
that's that's a much bigger uncertainty than what the different models are saying. Well, are the models uncertain? Oh, sure, all models are uncertain. But the uncertainty, but the difference between the models is smaller than the difference between the you know scenarios with different amounts okay. of greenhouse gases. Do we so have any scientific to... evidence that the measures we are taking to decarbonise right now are making any difference? Well, on a global scale, we haven't decarbonised. Emissions of greenhouse gases are still going up. There was a little blip downwards during the lockdowns in 2020 through COVID-19, but emissions are up to a high level on that now. So there's a lot of talk about decarbonisation, but as a global society, we have not started to reduce emissions. So OK, no but our yet. predictions for climate change are coming down and we haven't reduced emissions, which kind of, I'm sorry, call me a dumb layperson, uh, Jim, but that suggests to me that maybe um, they, the two aren't as related as we thought they might be. Well, the projections for the end of the century, that's the forecast, and they depend on what happens with technology and political action and so on and how much we admit of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. So looking at different scenarios, you know, gives you different answers. And look, I'm not exactly sure why that number changed. Um, but the, you know, the going from eight degrees to two and a half, that's comparing a maximum with an average, which is not much to do with... OK, but would you agree number. we are not facing now on that prediction, we're not facing Armageddon? <laughs> Oh, I, I wouldn't entirely agree with that statement. Oh, are no. we facing Armageddon? Because, the end of the world, as we know. Oh, oh that's a very hard question to answer, Sean. Like but I said, but, it, but I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jim, but this is the scenario that is being thrown down our throats and propagandised, and we have Guterres going to the COP summit saying we're at a tipping point, you know, we've got to act now. I'm sorry, whether or not there's going to be an apocalypse does kind of seem to be the point. Yep, ultimately you're right. If we let the warming get too high, and, and what too high means is, is a bit hard to say, then yeah, it could be the end of society as we know it. There would be enough disruption to completely upend the global economy and global society. Yep, definitely. Now, whether that's at two and a half degrees of warming or three degrees of warming or, or what, I don't know, but it's it's on the cards if we don't stop emitting greenhouse gases. OK. Uh, Jim, the other thing is we haven't seen a lot of really catastrophic predictions about billions of climate refugees, about nations slipping under the waves. Uh, looking at the latest data we've got from New Zealand from the Stats Department on sea level rise in our major cities, uh, around our major cities in New Zealand, Hamilton not being, being the exception, um, there doesn't seem to have been much a whole lot of things that were predicted to happen haven't happened. Oh, I don't know about that. We've had about 20 centimetres of sea level rise in the last century around the country and... 20, yeah, what? Going up. In the last century? 20 centimetres. Last yeah, 20 years we've different. had, I think, most two millimetres. No, it's about two millimetres. Oh, it's over two millimetres per year at the moment, so the last 20 years would have been four or five centimetres. No, it hasn't. I looked at the stats and we've covered them on this program, Jim. Is that right? Well, one, sorry, one to two millimetres a year. You are right. Sorry, I'm just looking back at my notes. OK, one to two centimetres. A couple of centimetres isn't the end of the world. It's not Wellington underwater, is it? No, it's not, but it's surprising how quickly uh, coastal... Inundation changes as you raise sea level. Ten centimetres of sea level rise, a coastal engineer would tell you, triples the danger of a coastal inundation event. The one in a hundred year flood becomes the one in thirty three year flood with ten centimetres of sea level rise. Yeah. And then it becomes the one in eleven year with another ten centimetres and so on. So coastal the coastal risk changes very rapidly yeah. with what even sounds like a very small yeah. But the number of people, number for example, dying from flood and natural disaster is dropping year on year, isn't it, around the globe? Well, if it is, then the adaptation um, to changing hazards is really working because That's I know great. the number of hazards is going up, including in New Zealand. So 
we're protecting ourselves better. But like I said before, it becomes unmanageable at some point. Yeah. You know, if the sea level rises a metre or two metres and the, Don't the, I, of the heat waves I, I, and the I, fires, you know. Yeah. I guess we've got, I mean, we live in a country that's supposedly in a climate emergency, and I'm just saying to you, maybe it's not an emergency anymore. Maybe we need to calm the farm, and it would seem to me that we all now accept the need to some sort of transition away from fossil fuels for a more sustainable way of living and running industry and taking care of ourselves and travelling. But it would seem to me we're no longer in a climate emergency, and it is silly to say that we are. Uh, no, I totally disagree with that. The warming continues, the greenhouse gas levels continue to go up, and the longer we wait, the closer we are to catastrophe in some parts of the but world. But you've world. told me this morning so, that while we haven't effectively decarbonised at all, the predictions by the UN are coming down for climate change. Those two things are not related. Yeah, we haven't decarbonised Oh, I thought, all, I thought, I'm sorry, James... I thought that they're totally related. That's what school kids are being indoctrinated into, right? Is that decarbonisation and climate change go together and unless you take drastic measures um, to decarbonise, climate change increases. I'm sorry, that was the whole basis of this madness yep. we've been yep. in. You're quite right. It's not madness, you know. It's, it's prudent behaviour, avoiding risks. And that's what humanity has to do. The projections from models for the end of the century or any time into the future depend on what we, what action we actually take. So, sure, they're related philosophically, but the situation today is not directly related to a projection to the for the end of the century because mm. of what we do between now and then that, that joins them up. All right. James, I don't know if it's made it any clearer, but it sounds to me like whatever the data... The climate change alarmists are not going to change their views. Well, I'd be very pleased to hear that because it's the climate change alarmists who are helping to push action. Action has been really slow on this issue because the big oil companies have been putting disinformation around for decades. This is well documented. Have they? So, have know, they? Is it well documented? How much money? Which, which bigger oil companies have done that? Oh, I think the one that's we have the most information on is X on mobile, but um, yeah, there's a really good book called Merchants of Doubt that was published 10 or so years ago that goes through the list of all the companies and what they've done and so on. Yeah, it's it's very well So known. did would it's they have influenced that industry. UN report that says it's not going to be as bad as we thought it was? Are I you blaming the oil so, companies for the UN's report? <laughs> well, no, not that I know of. But, you know, the oil companies employed a lot of the leading climate modellers back in the 1980s, and once they discovered what was going to happen, that's when they started the disinformation campaign. They had more delegates at the COP meeting in Egypt a few weeks ago than yeah. most of the countries of the world. You know, they're out there still pushing their own barrow. You know, they're, they're in it to make money, and, you know, bugger the future, basically. Well, I guess, and, Jim, um, the entire yeah, world, or the world you live in works on making money, you get paid, I presume. I do get paid, yeah. It's really, it's great, actually. I have a job. There you go. And everyone can say that. So I feel very privileged, you know. All right. Um, so you're saying, despite the fact that UN predictions are down, we've still got a panic? Yes, that's a pretty good summary. Even two and a half degrees of warming would be very hard to deal with in most places. Jim, I thank you so much for coming on this morning. It is nice to talk with you again. Uh, take it easy. We'll talk again soon. <laughs> That is Dr. James Rennick, weather and climate research. <laughs> so I got him to where I wanted. Yes, despite the fact that global warming predictions, even from the UN itself, are coming down without apparently any reduction in our carbon because we haven't done anything. Despite the fact they're coming down, we should still panic. And I don't think I'm misquoting him here because oil companies are evil and they want to make money. There you go. There you go. We're definitely in an emergency. I would say an emergency of common sense. Um, but there you go. That's just me, isn't it?